This is episode seven of Trading Bot Sessions, where we talk with traders who have built automated trading strategies and trade everything from stocks and options to futures and crypto. In this session, I speak with Traders Post customer Jay Patadia, who in five short months has tripled his futures account balance by running six fully automated strategies in ES and NQ futures. Jay covers how he started manually trading futures and realized that he needed an automation solution to overcome the timing and psychological hurdles of manual trading. We also spent some time talking about how Jay learned to develop strategies in PineScript by working with freelancers and the process he undergoes to analyze and backtest new ideas before putting them live. I trust you'll enjoy this episode of Trading Bot Sessions with Jay Patadia. Well, thanks, Jay, very much for joining us on here. It's really, really great to have you. We're really excited to learn a little bit about your background. So maybe if you could get started with your professional background and your journey as an automated trader. Sure. Thank you uh, for bringing me in for this uh, uh, conversation. I would love to share what I have been through and I can help others from what I learned. So I'm a CPA, I'm a seasoned CPA. I started my career as an analyst uh, and then uh, uh, got licensed in CPA and I run my CPA practice. For last 10 years, I have been doing trading, mainly not trading, I, I would say long-term investment in stocks, mainly based on uh, some advice on like maybe online forums or newsletter, right? and. Uh, Few months back, maybe less than less than a year ago, one of my friends, uh, we were talking about futures. He he said he was studying in futures and he was uh, uh, learning uh, technical analysis, mainly charting, using trading view. And uh, we were talking about it and looking at uh, the the technology we have, looking at the the leverage power of the futures, mainly NQ and ES. It got me interested in learning, and uh, I was able to quickly learn different indicators and uh, charting methodology, and came up with a few strategies on trading view uh, that generate signals. And then what I did is I started uh, placing an order using those signals. The biggest hurdle was the psychological thing, right? Even though sometimes I miss the signal because I'm in a meeting or I'm in a I'm I'm on a call with the client. Sometimes I exit out of the signal before the actual uh, ex- exit out of the strategy before actual signal because I just don't want to lose money or you know become so anxious. So I'm like this is I have a good strategy. It's working on paper, but only thing is when I'm manually doing it, it was not working. So I, I needed a some kind of tool that can automate uh, the, the, the strategy. And then I came through a, a trader post. And I, I, I first few days, I ran the strategy on, on using a paper trading account, worked like a charm. Uh, and then I started uh, using those strategies on the real account. And since then, um, this is like, Awesome. I'm. I, I run my strategies. I, I looked at the the trades uh, placed by the strategy. 15, 50, every fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. But other than that, I don't even touch it. And Trader Post has been a big, big, big help doing that. That's great to hear. Um. So, are you running all three of those strategies still today, or have you? Yes, uh, I have. I started with uh, like one strategy, and now I have six strategies uh, running six. right now, six, yes. And my goal to get to at least 10 by end of this year. Yeah, so maybe you can speak to what are those strategies trading and what markets are are they trading? Are, they're all in futures, I assume, but- Yeah, all our futures, I mainly trade NQ and ES, more on NQ side than ES. And uh, this strategy is uh, this based on different indicators like Maybe you may have heard about super trend or or alpha trend, those kind of indicators. Of course, then I tweak it. I just don't take a plain signal based on the indicator. But then, when market is choppy, and then 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 I get a signal. Of the system will avoid those kind of signal. When there's a big event, system may system will uh, avoid those kind of signal because that could be a reversal too. Also, system look at the volume. So. 
I, I combined three, four indicators into one and then came up with the final uh, strategy. And also that strategy only runs between certain times. So one, one of the strategy that I have, it will start running at 5 a.m. in the morning till uh, uh, 3.55 p.m. Eastern time. One strategy will start at 8.55 a.m. And you may ask why you have a different time for different strategies. So when I was back testing, I, what I used to do is I used to back test using different time zone for last 24 months. And the strategy that I'm running at 5 a.m., starting at 5 a.m., when I ran that for the last back test for, for last 24 months, it was giving me optimal performance. So that's how I came up with the times. And then I also tweak with the stop losses and training stop losses. We've had similar results with future strategies where we we isolate the time of the day in which we'll take an entry. So totally makes right. sense. Right. Did you have any early setbacks in developing all of these strategies? Um, the setback, early setback was uh, mainly the, the uh, for me to a stop loss uh, because NQ, as you know, is, is very volatile and uh, sometimes it can go down by 100 points and I was and then I get out early because knowing, oh, I'm going to lose money, but then it get the reversal. So then uh, I implemented training stop losses. And one of the uh, good thing about Trader Post that they all, you guys also have a training stop loss too in the strategies. So if the trading view strategy doesn't have st st trailing stop losses, I can also have that uh, for using the Trader Post. So it helped me a lot to minimize my losses or, or maximize profits. That was a recent feature of ours. Yes, and uh, I'm I'm close. I'm, I'm I closely follow all those feature updates on Twitter posts, and I try to uh, utilize those as much as possible. And uh, yeah, that was the one. And the sec the major setback for me was psychological, as I said before. I was even though the signal is there, I was not following it properly, and uh, the and automation just changed my life. Do you have any conflicts with multiple strategies running on the same symbol at the same time? So I have the separate trading accounts for each strategy, but I was able to trade NQ and ES into the one brokerage account means when uh, TradingView sends signals, uh, TraderPost can place an order into one trading account. And then also for each strip, like I don't, I don't run more than two strategies into one trading, trading account. To avoid conflicts and also I can I can track the performance dollar wise as well and I can match what's the trading views uh, strategy based of performance versus my what's my actual brokerage accounts performance and I also uh, analyze slippage every, after every session and once the market is closed I go back I download uh, data from the brokerage account download trades from the trading view and just compare. And what have you found in terms of how accurate TradingView slippage model is compared to reality? Uh, what I found is when there's a big market event like FOMC meeting or CPI release, I get big slippage because this market is too volatile, right? In in so that's why sometimes I try to avoid trading in those kind of times. And once it's normalized, then I start then I start my algorithms. So that way I to avoid losses. Do you account for that in your back tests that your strategy won't trade FOMC events? Uh, I did. I uh, know I did not account for that because I, I, it was, I thought about it, but it was too difficult in trading view to do that because I have to, I have to go back and I have to, uh, uh, exclude certain days. And so, uh, but I didn't know. I didn't backtest it, but when the, when I started running the strategies in in real time, it gave me better result than the backtesting for sure. So, can you describe a bit about your best strategy and the thesis behind it? Uh, the best strategy I have right now uh, is Alpha Trend. Uh, I call it uh, a stop loss Alpha Trend. So, I took the standard Alpha Trend indicator and then I use Hull. Uh, moving average to exit out. And also I put stop loss, trailing stop losses to, to exit out, whatever kicks in first. Uh, and uh, as I said, and also I run the strategy during certain time. I don't run for 24 hours. Is that to say that you 
only take your entry during certain times, but you'll exit during any time? Uh, yes and no. So one strategy out of six strategy, I told you uh, all the strategies are will exit out at 3.55 p.m. Eastern time. Hmm. But there's one the strategy that I have, right. The one strategy I have it will, will not exit out at 3.55. It will, it will go on until the strategy gets the exit signal. So I hold those positions overnight. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how you learned PineScript and how, how you've developed the process for putting these indicators together. So uh, as I said, uh, I got into trading into futures like uh, almost a year ago and, and I was looking at a trading view and then I was looking at how people build strategies using PineScript. Then I started learning PineScript, but then I thought if I want to become an expert in PineScript, it will take a long time for me because I, my background is not technical. I'm I'm a I'm a accounting person. So what I did is I I got basic understanding of PineScript and then I started hiring uh, contractors or or like freelancers online. Upwork, one of the the platform I use called Upwork, uh, where what I do is I first I come up with a strategy that I want to have a, like a PineScript for, and I post a job on Upwork. I also I clearly write each and every description, what exactly I need, what indicator I'll be using, what are my entry and exit points are. So whoever is taking a project, they 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 know they don't I don't want to give them surprise, right? So they know what they get into. So I, they can then they can give me how much time it will take, what will it will cost, and I'll also I always account for fifteen percent overage in case if if that happens. And then uh, I post a job. Uh, generally, I get. 10 to 15, 10 to 12 response, but I, the good ones are maybe one or two that I pick and then I start working with them. And within like three, four days, I get the strategy. I test out, we go back and forth, but within a week I get the strategy that I need. And then I start back testing and all that. So it works fine for me. So I never got into actually writing Pine script, but I ha I know I can read the code. I can see how he wrote a code, but I don't write the code. And it's fairly easy to validate that the strategy is doing what you expect it to based on where the trades show up on TradingView, correct? Correct. Then I, I backtest the strategy and actually I looked at each and every trade uh, because you can do that. And when you click on that uh, uh, list of trades on particular trade, it will take you to that particular trade on the day. So, and then you can see how the candle movement worked, how the signal worked, and then you, you can see if the strategy is working as I expected or not. If not, then I go back. Uh, I find sometimes I find a bug. So biggest thing I found, and you may be aware about is, what happens is in trading view when there is a, let's assume there's a buy signal, right? And uh, the, the, the it's going up, uh, you have a green candles, and there will be a time where there is a sudden reversal and then you get the sell signal and then strategy has to do from here they have to go to from buy to sell in that situation they have to like if you buy one then you have to sell two to get exit out from in those kind of situation uh, strategy may not work properly well i suppose there's a solution for that with traders post if you reverse the position right right but i also thought about some other solution to in trader post to fix that so what I was thinking is every strategy that I have in the op inputs or options, I have a long and short, like buy or sell option. So what I was thinking is I may create a two fig alerts for each strategy. One is on just for the buy and one just, one just for the sell. Mm -hmm. And every strategy I do, I also select add two positions into, into the trader post when I do the subscription. So that way what will happen is it will avoid that. I just thought about it like over the weekend. I have not tried out yet. Let us know how that goes. I think it should work. Yes, right. I will. And so you put your first uh, future strategies in a live account how long ago? Uh, five months. And do you mind sharing how you've done in five months? Five months, uh, 3x capital. That's that's the return. You've tripled uh, your your initial it, capital in five months. Yes, uh, in those those also includes all the drawdowns and losses and and yeah, and 
what happens is when you have multiple strategies running, that loss will come down because you're not just dependent on one strategy, right? So sometimes the loss from one strategy may be offset with the profit from another strategy. And all my strategies are not just based on one kind of indicator. It's some will avoid chop zone. Some will trade on momentum, right? Some will just trade on averages or moving averages. So I use a trading journal as well as a third-party software where I connect all my trading accounts and it will uh, extract the data. And then I can go and go back and see how each account performed, how many winning trades, how many losing trades, and uh, so that way I can analyze how it is working as well. What I noticed when I when I started running multiple strategies, my actual overall loss came down. Yeah, it's like portfolio management, right? When a stock, when you buy in a mutual fund, when you buy multiple stocks, of course, overall return may be low compared to the market, but also your your losses are also low. Maybe some part of that might change if there is any kind of major sell-off event in both NQ and ES, right? That is true. But every strategy that I have, I also have some kind of stop training stop losses or stop loss. So uh, it because you know in 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 futures when it goes down, you also lose a lot of money if you don't have stop losses. So do you have your sights on any other futures? Oh uh, no, for now I mainly uh, want to work on NQ and ES. But I just as I said, I want to come up with a more strategies that are tradable or, or in different kind of market environment mm -hmm. when there's an earnings season or when there's a economic data release or what most of if you if you notice what happens is out of five days one or two days when market is like going up and down in a one direction but other three days it's mainly really like choppy going up and down within a, it's a trade within a range i have not come up with any strategy yet but i'm working on one that may take care of that when it can trade when the market is is like a is trading within a range maybe you could tell us a little bit more about your goals for the rest of this year uh so right now uh the goal is to come up with another four to five so i can have 10 trading strategies going on uh as, as one is the range trading and uh, other one is that all uh that trades uh, only during like market event um, only for 30 minutes or 40 minutes when there is a CPI data, because what happens is when there's, there's a market data release in a single take, it goes up like 30. If it's NQ, it it moves 30, 40, 50 points, which is like thousand dollar if you look at NQ. And uh, so I, I was testing it out manually. What I did is uh, when there's a market data release, I, I go to two different trading accounts of mine. In one trading account, I will enter the sell side with the stop loss and I will enter on other trading account, I will enter a buy side with the stop loss. And as soon as the data is releasing, whatever the situation, whatever the direction it goes, it will it will get out of the one of the trade uh, if the candle is other side. So if, for example, if I have a buy side trade and if candle is going up, of course, uh, stop loss will get hit on, on a sell side trade and it will get out and as long as it doesn't, it goes up in buy side. I don't even wait for like a few minutes. That's soon, I have a target like fifty points or hundred points, and as soon as it hits, I get out. So it's a very fast hedged position. Yes, it is. Uh, max is three to four minutes. Right. And so, is that to say that if your long succeeds because the market goes up, the reward is roughly two times? The, the downside for the stop two loss? To, two, 2.5 to three times, yes. Two to three, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I want to come up with a, a strategy that only trades during that period only. The only thing that maybe would affect that is fast slippage on the stop loss, right? Correct, right. That's gotcha. why right now I'm placing those trades manually to avoid any slippage. I mean, of That's course, still I'm going to have some slippage. Are you primarily looking at the the interest rate events, or are there other events? Oh uh, no, I look at the interest rate, CPI, unemployment data, housing data, any major economic event. So tomorrow you're prepared for another manual. Right. Training. So I, yeah. So every morning I come in. So uh, and I look at I have a uh, this uh, the the fav browser favorite where there is, when I click on that I can see all this market event. So first thing I do when I come in my off my my work zone. Look at all what what's going on today. 
mm -hmm. and then plan according to that. Is there anything on your mind that you like talking about when it comes to markets? Based on my experience, as I, and I'm not a seasoned trader, any trader has to overcome the psychological factors. If you are, so in sometimes what happens is, as I, as I said, I'm a CPA and I run a coding tax season, it's very stressful sometimes. So what I do on those days, I just even don't do anything. I just close my trading view, my brokerage account and don't touch it. Even though I miss some opportunities, I'm okay with that because I believe making no money is better than losing money. So uh, that's what I do. Uh, and I try to automate as much as possible. So I don't have to manually place orders and that will also, I can control my losses. Otherwise, if I'm doing manually, I may enter a position that I'm not supposed to enter. So that's, a, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. Can you share a bit about how you've learned this process of developing strategies? So when first I started looking into the NQ and I was just uh, looking at the candlesticks uh, charts, then I took some courses. Uh, there's, uh, there's one good, very good course on Udemy.com is an online education site where you can buy courses and they are very good on uh, technical analysis. Uh, so I took that course. So then I, I get the understanding of how the candlestick works, how the Fibonacci works, RSI works, EMS works. And then I started testing it out because on a trading view, there are a lot of strategies out there, indicators out there, like uh, free indicators, standard indicators for RSI or TTM squares. And then I started playing around with, with those indicators. And I was just, just looking at how it reacts when there's an up and down in a market. And based on that, I thought, hmm, if we do that, we can, we can have a good signal and then that's how I came up with the, the, the strategies. Well, is there any way people can get a hold of you online? Are you are you on social media that you can share? Yeah, uh, I'm um, I'm on LinkedIn. They can also uh, reach out to me using my email, jpatardia at gmail.com. I'm then happy to help. Great. Okay. I appreciate that. Well, thanks very much for, for coming on. I think this is a great review of, of the process. We encourage people to go through as much as possible, but congratulations on the, on the early success. And I hope, uh, I hope you do really well here. This has been great. Sure. And I'll keep you updated, Mike. And thank you again for uh, uh, bringing me in for this uh, conversation. You bet.